We're going to take advantage of the situation, Stacy being on set, uh, to, to start right off the bat and teach us about what she feels is the most important thing that she loves to see with production assistants because she is a key production assistant. Start off telling us a little bit about how you got this job and tell us a little bit about Pose. Uh, cool. So I got this job um, through two PAs that I was working with on um, FBI who I became friends with just through being on set and, you know, being together all the time. And, um, yeah. And I, I, you know, I was looking for work. You remember when I was struggling a little bit, looking for some jobs, you know, doing some things here and there. Um, and I, I, I stopped starting to reach out to keys and I started just reaching out to other production assistants, you know, who I knew had been in the business for a while and, um, you know, people who had become my friends and they were like, yeah, yeah, I know somebody who's keying on a show coming up. Like, I'd be happy to vouch for you and um, send my number. You know, so they did. And, uh, yeah, and I got on this. And I ended up, she asked me if I wanted to be an everyday additional. And I was like, yeah, I might have something coming up. Uh, you know, I'd love to do that for as long as I can. Um, yeah, and then I got the job on post. So, I, you know, tomorrow's my last day on this set, which is sad. It's so sad. But, uh, you know, on to the next one. I know we get very attached with people. Hold yeah. On. Okay, so so give us a rundown if you can remember. Boom, boom, boom! All the shows that you've been on and move and movies. I did the first season of Kimmy Schmidt. I just did one day. Um, in between that, I did a lot of like non-union, really small, tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little things. Um, and then I was on Broad City. I was on um, FBI. I was on Madam Secretary. I was on uh, reshoots for The Last OG, which is Tracy Morgan's show. That was season two. Um, what else did I do? The Village. I did a couple days on The Village. That's coming out soon. Um, Mr. Robot and then Pose. Awesome. And uh, The Good Cop. The Good Cop. I was on The Good Cop also. But I was a prop PA, so I was in the office all the time. Fantastic. Okay. And you've worked with other mentors on set as well, haven't you? Yeah. Roland. I work with Roland. Uh -huh. And uh, Lear and I haven't crossed paths yet, but we will soon. I have a feeling that we will soon. We know a lot of mutual people at this point, so. Yeah, isn't that fun? That's awesome. It okay. is fun. Okay, so now uh, we've got a lot of people that are starting off, uh, people that are well into it. Uh, and uh, we wonder if you can give us some tips, what you want to see, how to be a good production assistant. Yeah, um, it's definitely like make sure you're showing up early um, and that people know that you're on set right away. Like, you know, maybe get some breakfast in you if you have time, but make sure that you're hooking up with the key pretty early, you know, making sure you get on walkie as soon as possible. What's up, dude? Um, making sure you get on walkie as soon as possible to, um, you know, be able to take orders from other people. And, um, you know, usually when you link up with the key pretty early, they can, um, you know, tell, tell, they can tell you what they want you to do. So, you know, whether it's standing by breakfast and getting orders or, you know, getting into your lockup position or this or that other thing. Um, what else is good stuff? Um, make sure that you're, you're near the key at not at all times. But if you don't specifically have something to do in that moment, you're like getting close to them so they can use you immediately. You know, and that that's a really good look because, you know, you're not hiding somewhere. You're not like slacking off, like you're very attentive and you're there on set and you want to be helpful. Um, tell tell us that, that everybody, okay, I want you to hold that thought because they don't really know what a key is. Maybe. Right. Even. Okay. It's the, the, the king or queen of the PAs. <laughs> and who does a key PA work for? Um, the AD department. Oh. And who hires key PA? Uh, usually they interview by the AD department, whether it's the first, second, or second, second AD uh, as like a recommendation. Yep. Or and sometimes they could come from the UPM, you never know. Mm -hmm. And with commercials, you've done commercials, it comes from the, no, have not? I know, I, I don't have done commercials. Oh. Comes from the production coordinator, the production manager, the producer, and the AD department, all hires PAs. A little bit different on commercials. So you're, right. You're blocking the bathrooms there, huh? Decided to move no, out to the bathroom. No, I was by the AD office and people keep going in and out. And I was like, I don't want it to look like I'm not doing anything, but I'm waiting for something to come out of the office. So that's why I have a, some time here. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> girl. Thank you for being with us. Okay. Oh, so yeah, of course. Tell us more. Tell us more. We wanted to clear that key thing up. So, yeah. Um, but, 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 okay. So, being by the key so that they can put you in something, like always being smiley and friendly and 
you know, making sure when you hear other people complaining, like try and lift their spirit up and, you know, all, all of us are in this industry and most of us have, you know, boisterous, upbeat personalities. And even if you don't, like it's a really good time to practice because you're going to be around these people for like 70 hours a week if you're full time on a show. So you got to get used to like being the lively one and, be, you know, being being somebody who gets the job done, but can also like other people want to be around you yeah. for a long time because um, <laughs> that's really important. But uh, yeah, just always being the first to like, you know, if somebody's battery starts dying on their walkie, like trying to be the first one there with a fresh battery or, um, you know, somebody needs a pen or somebody needs water. Like I used to do this all the time. Well, I still do it most times. But um, when just like walking around on set and just handing out water bottles to people like, you know, they, a lot of people like can't really leave what they're doing to go get themselves some water so you know the fact that we have a little bit of freedom we can uh you know help people out keep people hydrated it's a it's a tough job it's you know long days it's long hours it's a lot of dehydration some sun some wind some rain snow yeah all yeah. of it you bet but it beats restaurant business any day right heck yeah heck yeah <laughs> what what are some mistakes that you've seen people make um like complaining gossiping um those are just more like personality mistakes rather than like you know you forgot to announce that an actor was leaving the trailer or something like that but all those things that all those things come from like um experience you know you never know if you're doing something right or wrong until somebody tells you so you know there's just a million little things that you have to learn like the protocol on and you know you can't teach that in a day that that i'm still learning you know little ins and outs and things like that yeah little details it's so true so should, would people be afraid that they're gonna mess up and make mistakes because you learned a lot of the little details by doing yeah right? no it's not it's not fearful because even if you're working with like some great ad's like they know that they can kind of you know take stuff out on you a little bit because you know they've got other stuff coming from above them but um they're never really taking it out on you they're just trying to help you and it may come off like a little stern but um you know if you're working with somebody that respects you they'll always like come back and apologize if they feel like they've taken a, to a certain tone with you that was maybe you know a little unfair or anything like that yeah which is um you Do know you it's just part of it's part of the learning process and if, if they didn't want you to learn then they let you keep making mistakes so then you just don't get invited back exactly that's a great point can you give us an example of uh how that could come across or how that could come how that could happen um uh yeah sure so this happened to me like two weeks ago um i was taking the first we were on location we we're upstate new york uh i was asked to be on the first van back to uh, the city because i was the first one in and um, one of the girls in the car, one of the makeup artists asked me if I had a call sheet on me. I was like, no, I don't, but I'll run into the office and, and get one for you. I ran into the office. The second AD is like, Stace, you got like, you get out of here. Like that van has to go. Cause he's like worried about um, turnaround time, golden hour, you know, mm. all that good stuff. Mm, yeah. And, um, and so, uh, you know, he kind of like took a little tone with me and I was like, all right, all right, dude, I'm just grabbing a sheet. I'm gone. I'm gone. And then the next day he like apologized to me and he was like, I'm sorry if it seemed like I was being a little harsh on you. You know, I just need to get these people out of here because I got other things to worry about. Like I got to worry about their 12 hour turnaround. And, you know, he's like, I'm not yelling at you. Like, it's OK. And I was like, dude, I don't get offended. Like, like go ahead, yell at me all you want. Like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and then that that's awesome because it makes him feel like, OK, that she understands me. Not like, yeah. oh, I can yell at her. It's more like, oh, she understands yeah. me. Thank goodness. I've worked in I've worked in restaurants long enough that like, you know, I've gotten yelled at by enough managers and all those people that like it. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. Yeah, it makes me tougher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, cool. Great. All right. Other tips to make us really good doing this job, production assistant, having conversations, meeting people in, uh, in uh, the departments. How yeah. do you do it? Um, well, you're on set all the time, all, all day. A lot of times people wear their rap gifts of like shows, other shows that they've worked on. So like I try to make a connection that way and being like, oh, you worked on so-and-so. I know this person who worked on that. And you can just like easily start a conversation that way. And yeah. You know, and even if you haven't worked on the show or if it's a show you like, you can be like, oh, my God, I love that show. How was it working for so and so, you know? Yeah, I love it. That's great. I don't know. And how about uh, was, how about what you want to do in the business? Second AD, script, um, art, production I don't, design? I, don't even, I still don't even know, man. <laughs> it's fine. 
Um, I yeah, I've been I've been kicking some major butt in the AD department, so you know we'll see how that goes. But uh, I'm still into props, you know. So I kind of want to incorporate that a little bit more, but it's it's difficult when I'm spending so much time in the AD department. Yeah. Um. So you know, maybe when I have some downtime, I'll go get my certifications and hit up my prop people, and you know, start start getting back in the art world. I could see you doing both. You'd be exceptional in both. I mean, I'd be happy to do it all, you know? Oh, look at her smile. See? <laughs> yeah, you can see how she's getting hired and, all the time. And I've been up since 3 a.m. Holy shit. Wow. What time <laughs> did you go to bed? Uh, like 10. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wasn't, not, not enough time, but it, it's okay. Yeah. I'm good. I'm happy. Yeah. We're almost done. So. Tell us one of the best experiences of your life, maybe working with somebody really cool that you always wanted to meet. Um, definitely when I was on set for Broad City. Uh, I love that show. And it was like always a goal of mine to get on that show. Yeah. And um, I actually just watched one of the episodes recently and you can see me in the background. Not that I made a mistake by like being a PA. They had to have us go incognito because we had to just like sweet people and like I knew exactly where I was during that scene and I was like really intently looking for myself and then I found me. So I'm like in a scene in Broad City and that's life. Um, also, I'm on set with Rami Malek right now and I am helping out first team. So I interact with him on like a daily basis and it's really cool. That's so much fun. Um, and yeah. you've worked with a lot of celebrities. Who have you worked with? Um, Josh Groban, Tony Danza, the girls from Broad City. Uh, on this show, it's Rami Malek and Christian Slater. Um, who else? Oh, Danny Glover. I worked with Danny Glover on a movie. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah. On the last, uh, on the last OG, I was Tracy Morgan. Um, I'm trying to think if anyone else was in that show. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. Enough yeah. celebrities. Yeah. 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 And how about the money? Are you making more money than you were at the restaurants? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Twice as much? And that's just, uh, I mean, just the consistency of working every day and getting those paychecks every week, every week, rather than like, you know, working like three days at the restaurant or, you know, two days or one day, you know, and it's just like struggling and, you know, it's nice to have some days off, but it's also like now when I have a day off, I lose my mind. I lose my mind. I had like two days off and I was like getting anxiety being like, I need to go back to work. Like this is the only thing that like fuels me. Gotcha. Okay. I had a question here. What's the hardest or most challenging thing you'd have to do or that you've had to do? Um, I guess just like, oh man, we had like a heat wave this past summer. And just working outside during that and like trying to like keep it together while you're also like slowly dying of like heat exhaustion. Um, I'm trying to think like mentally if I've ever or like physically have had, you know, to do tough things. Just like any lockup in popular areas of New York is really challenging because, you know, people are just trying to go to work and you got to like stop them because they, you know, they can't walk through the shot and, you know, stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. It's uh, those parts can be really difficult and really taxing, like on your um, on your mind and your soul. But what were you afraid of before you were in the film industry that now you're like, oh, I'm not afraid of that anymore? Um, I, I mean, this still happens to me, too. Just like, you know, continuing to like book myself when I really need it and like continuing to find work and to reach out. But I just got over that hump like recently and it's it's just been great. And now I have to like now I have to turn down jobs. I had to turn down like six or seven jobs recently. And one of them was a J Lo movie. I was so mad. <laughs> okay, so what was the turning point there? Tell us that. What changed what's um, the difference? Yeah, I mean that just happened like um a couple months ago and it was mm -hmm. in between this and like um leaving FBI. And just being like, nothing's coming to me. It's also like during the slow part. So, um, slow season. Give me, give me, give me a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah. Was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like slow during season. the slow season. And, um, you know, I was, nothing was coming my way. And I was having trouble reaching out because I was banking on like staying on that one show. And actually leaving that show was like the best thing that happened to me because it opened like a whole new Rolodex of people that I can reach out to. And it got me like flexing some communication muscles and like, yeah. you know, Working my butt off. 
Yeah, <laughs> Re reaching out. Yes, yeah, so sometimes, and I think this is a big mistake that people make, go ahead and do your thing while I talk, if you need yeah. to, or jump in. Uh, pe people want to be comfortable, and we want to stay with what we know because it's certainty. We got certainty. Well, at least I have this shoot, and what if I, you know, this maybe, the situation was that she wasn't really gelling with her boss on set, and she wasn't really getting that many days. So she's like, oh, maybe it's me, maybe I, you know, but she she didn't have a lot of confidence in herself to go out there and just like say, well, forget this, I'll just get on a whole bunch more shows. Until she came on a Zoom call, we talked, I'm like, just get that out there, get your ass out there, yeah. so reach out to a bunch of people. She she jumped into action, lo and behold, all these people are like, oh my God, Stacy, oh, we'd love to work with you, available next week, next week, next week, this day, this day. Got yeah. a whole bunch of stuff, and now she's now she can't turn it off. It's like a faucet that's on full blast. Yeah, I think a lot of people know that I'm like working on this, and then I'm staffed on my next job, so it's kind of died down of people offering me things. Yeah, but uh, they were flowing in for like two, three weeks. Like I would get at least one or two offers a day, and uh, you know those are just people to, for me to keep in mind when I'm looking for the next one. You know. Yes, and it's because of you reaching out yeah and just having a good attitude and like knowing what i'm you know and it took a while for me to get into this flow of like when when i come to a new set i already know what i'm doing i feel comfortable i'm easy to talk to people i'm also easy for people to talk to and you know that comes when you're confident and like when you know what you're doing and you know um yeah just you know almost having a strategy at every point yeah i, I love it and um i don't know if you could talk about this but can you can you tell us about per because it seems like you're such a perfect person everything's going yeah, so perfectly for you you know look at you big smile no problem you know <laughs> everything's just like should become so easy to you but can you tell us some of the, st the struggles that you've had and how it's built you into who you are today yeah i mean i can just again like go back to just two months uh yeah like two months ago i was like really down and i was like picking up shifts at the restaurant again and I was just like fearful that like, you know, it'd be a while until I until I got something and, and it didn't take that long. And, and I never really doubted myself, but I was just like, oh, come on, like they should be coming to me. And it's like, no, like you got to reach out and go get them. Like they're not just going to come to you without you working hard. Yeah, that's good. That's right. That's right, you guys. Yeah. Because people, they, they, even though you're great, they love you, they forget about you. And then when you reach yeah. out to them, like, oh, and they've God, got Stacey. you. And they've got a million other things that they're worrying about. And they're worrying about, like, other people that they're trying to hire. And usually those come from the direct people that they're with on set. So say I'm on set with, you know, Amy or whatever, and I'm the key, and Amy's giving me people that want to work on the show. You know, they're going to go right for those people. So, you know, you can just be that little constant reminder. And I had, at first, I was, like, nervous about reaching out, like, every week, being like, hey, I'm available this day, this day day this day and then I was like what what does it matter I, at the end of the day I'm helping them you know <laughs> great that's so great yeah she's helping them because they need somebody and she's like hey I'm available these days okay so yeah and they're like oh that's right <laughs> yeah. great here's a question from Courtney how soon after joining a list did you get your first pay job oh man that was real quick it was like two months okay all right and here's another question. How long have you been in the program? What is your advice to people who are just starting out? Um, I started in November of 2017. And um, my advice would be, you know, continue doing what you're doing that's helping you live your everyday lifestyle, but try and absorb as much as possible. And like when you're working on the modules, like really focus in on them. You know, try not to be distracted. You think of it as like you're going to school, you're taking a class. Like try not to be on your phone, try not to be watching TV or get distracted. Like, you know, you're spending money on, on what you're going to build your future on. So, you know, you might as well, like, use it widely. Um, but, yeah, just soak in everything and, you know, things will happen. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Good. Um, all right. Then Alex says, what do you want to do after PA? Well, she already said she doesn't know yet. She's still uh, <laughs> having the experiences. So she's figuring it out. Um, yeah. How many PAs did you do before gaining the most confidence? Um, uh, I would say probably after I worked on Broad City this, this summer, which like, uh, before that I was doing the prop work in the office and then, um, 
And then I took a couple months off and I was doing like some lower budget stuff. Um, and then, yeah, since I wasn't really on set as a PA, uh, after I did like three weeks on Broad City, I just felt like rejuvenated and it start, the ball started rolling for me again at that point. Um, and then I would say, I'm, I would honestly say it wasn't until like, yeah, it wasn't until, you know, like maybe November, December-ish, like of this past year where I was just like on set constantly. So there wasn't any like lag between and, um, you know, cause things can kind of die down and you lose momentum and you lose confidence. But when, uh, when I was, you know, like getting work constantly was when it was easier for me to feel confident and to like, remember everything I was doing and you just get in this like workflow and it just makes it so much easier. Cause it's like, no time is lost, yeah. you know? So, so she, uh, started this program a year and a half ago. And it took her a year, she said, just to give it in a time frame yeah, where she yeah, really right. started feeling confident, like she's got it going on, like show after show after show. And she went through tough times where there wasn't as much work. And then she started to doubt herself. <laughs> and then she went through a real period like that, like a couple yeah. months ago. And then she uh, decided, hey, I can't, I'm getting too comfortable here. Yeah. Let me reach out. But I would say at, at no point then was I like, I'm going to give up. Yeah, right, right. Well, you know, um, and you know, her, her version of not working enough was just a couple days a week as <laughs> yeah, a production assistant, by the way. Let's kind of, it's not like she didn't work for months. She's like, oh, I want to work five, six, five or six days a week, and I'm only working two to three. This, I'm really getting worried now, okay? <laughs> this is her. Yeah. Yes. So that's pretty good. Two to three days a week is like... 15 days a month. Yeah. So now you're yeah. doing like, holy shit. Now you're doing like, I, 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 I will only have weekends off, uh, until August and I've been working this whole month. So that's, yeah. uh, like five months, five, six months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. That's a lot. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Uh, and here's another question from Elena. How easy was it to get your first PA job? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what term I would use that like is easy because uh, I ended up getting my first job through a contact from my dad. Oh. So it was kind of easy in that way where it was like, you know, she already knew my family and she was able to meet with me and kind of gauge my personality. And um, that's when she got me one day on set of Good Cop. And um one day on set of Good Cop, and then I ended up getting offered the job to prop. I see. Okay. So this was so when you started the program, you started doing the things in the program, and you started letting people know, which is actually part of the program too. Everybody goes on your magic list, including friends of friends, anybody. Yeah. Okay. So this en ended up being somebody that your dad knew that worked on the show Good Cop. Cop, and what was her position? Um, well, she was a she did she did um like clearancing and product placement, and she's best friends with the UPM of that show. Oh my goodness! So she wasn't even. <laughs> that's interesting too, you guys. She wasn't even working on that show. She just friends with somebody, so she referred yeah. you. Wow, that's awesome. And the first job was as a PA. Prop, in the prop, prop. Yeah, I did a day on set, and then I was a prop PA. Yeah. Okay. Um, how happy are you now than you were before the program? Have you found any new empowerments thus far? Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. Every day is like constant reassurance of like how great I feel and how happy I am. And like, it's, you know, I'm, I'm working every day. I'm on set. I get to hang around awesome people all day. And like, we make movie and TV magic. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. yeah. Here's another question. Are there any skills we should maybe learn or improve to have a better chance of getting hired? Um, I would just say be comfortable around people, talking to people, um, you know, asking questions at the right time, um, you know, conversation starters if, if need be. Uh, you know, it's sometimes there will be times on set where you can't really talk to people, but, you know, talking to people and being social is how you're, you'll get recognized. Yeah. See, a lot of these questions, like here's another one. How, um, what's the biggest leap of faith you took on your career? A lot of these questions, just so that you know how to answer these, these are coming from new people that are just don't know that they can do this. They are just so right. afraid that they can do this. They're like, how long is it going to take? What, what leap of faith? I took a leap of faith. I hope this works for me. What do you have to say to everybody here? 
That's new. Sorry? Do you happen to know if the stunt coordinator is around? Uh, he's on set. Yeah. Just... It's, we're, we're filming right now, so I don't know if you'll be able to talk to him. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, it's down two blocks. Sorry. Um, is that just somebody off the street? I mean, she looks like a stunty and was asking if the coordinator was around, so. Mm, interesting. You know. Okay. Okay, so cool. Um, yeah, so the, a lot of these questions are coming from fear of, I don't know if this is going to work for me. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I have what it takes. I'm taking a leap of faith. I hope that this works out. What do you have to say to these people? Um, I would just say that, like, you you got to just trust yourself that you can do it. And, like, self-doubt happens, but, like, you can't let it get the best of you because then you're not going to, you know, you're going to question everything you do and you won't be able to, like, be your true self and like perform the way that like you know you can because i'm sure whatever you're doing at work now like sure you might not love it but you know it's almost the same skill set you know it's it's just being able to transfer it to something new and exciting that's right that's very good that's a very good response <clears throat> you guys have you all have what it takes plus you're here learning this stuff so you're gonna do yeah. it yeah you kidding me and and it's all a learning process and everybody's happy to help like there's no question that's a stupid question there's there's at, at no point that somebody's gonna like get angry at you for asking a question i mean obviously not while we're like taking a shot you know in the middle of a take but you know everybody's we're, we're i like to somebody said this to me and i thought it was awesome to call like a crew we were the village you know like we are a village of people yeah. we are together all the time you know we have our hair people our makeup people the production assistants the camera crew like we are just a village of people and we're all together to like make this one thing happen so yeah. you know as much as anybody can help you they will yeah, yeah that, absolutely that, that's a good feeling it's team it puts you in the right state yeah for sure What's the hardest part of starting? Um, I guess just getting started, you know, like making those first, you know, emails um, and phone calls when you don't feel super confident and you're just learning. That's definitely difficult. Uh, it's hard to sell yourself on something you don't necessarily know how to do. Um, but, you know, once you know, once I got to that part in the modules about, uh, you know, sending ready to work emails and just getting my workflow on that. Yeah. Yeah, dude. No, I can hand it to her. <laughs> Time cards. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for getting into that workflow and trying to sell myself at first when I didn't have super, like a lot of experience, um, that was definitely difficult because I don't want to lie. I don't want to oversell myself, but what I can oversell myself on is my excitement to be a part of it and my willingness to learn. So it's just kind of transferring your unsure energy into um, like inquisitive confidence. Yes, that's beautiful, you guys. See, uh, you, you don't have to come into the film industry with experience. Most people don't. It's really about the attitude, the energy, the desire. Yeah. Yep, yep. And although you got the first job through uh, your uh, connection, um, how did you build this career? Like, with, which methods helped you build this career? Um, definitely sending ready to work emails. Uh, whenever you guys get to that, that is gold. It is so much gold, so much gold. That helped me get a lot of, um, you know, unpaid or low paid jobs to get a lot of experience. Um, and then just, um, you know, keeping in contact with keys and other PAs that I've met and, you know, reaching out to them, adding people on Facebook or Instagram is a great idea because it's kind of like a little reminder that you're there. Like if they post something on Facebook, you know, like it or comment on it or, you know, something like that. Keeping in touch without, um, you know, texting all the time or something like that, because I feel like, you know, texting is a direct line of contact, whereas like Facebook is just like a little reminder that you're around. And then you can start to send those texts when you are looking for work. You know, it was, it was keeping in, in connection with people that I was working with that I knew could help me in, in the future. Yeah. And, you know, to even explicitly say to them in person, like, Hey, I really want to get into this industry. You know, I really enjoyed working with you on set. Like how, how can I excel? Like even asking them how, how, how they, how they've done it. You know, everybody that you're meeting on set is, is it can be a teacher to you. So use them. Beautiful. That's right.